Welcome to the Yonkers Voice, ladies and gentlemen. We are today meeting with the new Vision Party. Now, folks, remember, the Yonkers Voice, Mount Vernon Voice, has zero input as far as what the, what your, no partiality mm -hmm. is where we're going at. And we like to open up with that all of the time, folks. Uh, we're going to go around the table. We're going to do some introductions. We're going to start with the uh, City Hopeful Comptroller. And why don't you guys go ahead and give your names and tell the audience who you are. Good afternoon, Yonkers Voice. My name is Walida Aime. I'm Mount Vernon Voice. Mount Vernon Voice as well. I am running for control of Mount Vernon with the New Vision Party. Steve? Hi, I'm Stephen Facendo. I'm also running for the, with the New Vision Party. Hi, Yonkers Voice, Mount Vernon Voice. My name is Robin Harmon Myers, and I'm running for City Council for the New Vision Party. Hi, Mount Vernon Voice. Hi, Yonkers Voice. My name is Angela Neal, and I'm running for the position of city council person for Mount Vernon. Now, unlike a lot of city councils, there's not a district that the city council has. I mean, in Yonkers, fourth largest city, you have district one, two, three, four. Tell us what's the difference between a Mount Vernon city council and, and a council similar to your neighboring city? Well, that's just the way they devise it, actually. Uh, the, you know, I guess really huge cities do, you know, want to divide it up into sections. Uh, but or Mount Vernon is just for, for some reason that's just one the way they want it's, 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 yes. it's just one as a whole. Yeah, you know? the, the city council members do have. I'm sorry. No, the, the city okay. council members do have a particular section of uh, focus that they give each council member. For example, public safety um, and that kind of thing. So they do have a focus. Each individual city council person. That's good to know. Yeah. Yes. Now what? Now distinguish between the three of you. And, and we're going to get to in a second. Um, but what you know? What distinguishes you? What What are your goals and focuses? What will be your part with the city council? Can anyone of us start? Uh, we'll start with you. <laughs> um, my main concern about the city council right now is that a lot of the departments, I should say, with city leadership, a lot of the departments don't know what's going on with the other. I feel strongly we need to work on a comprehensive plan, which would have separate area plans for each part of the city, historic overlay, bicycle trail, transportation plan, and then as we all come together with one vision, we could have interagency meetings under the leadership of the mayor, and we could all come together and everyone would know what the vision is for the city and work together when different people come in proposing different ideas mm -hmm. from Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think, I want to see, I want to see that there is actually a culture shift when uh, there, there's new leadership. I want to see cleaner streets. I want to see uh, the kinds of things that uh, w would be indicators that there's new leadership. Cleaner streets, uh, a better communication between the public. I think as a citizen uh, currently and, and sitting on ARB boards and, and that kind of thing, uh, we, we definitely want to do the work of the people. We want them to feel impacted. We want them to uh, say, wow, okay, uh, I'm seeing where this vote, this vote I cast is going. So that's what I'd like to engender. Steve? Well, I think, as everybody has mentioned, like really important is that, again, that, that the government does work together, the mayor, the city council, uh, and then to, uh, and then work down from there. Now Wait. somebody, let me just, now sure. somebody, no. uh, folks, you can go to the website, which is where I pulled some of the information on the new vision. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me what the, uh, tell our viewers what the, what the website is. Which website for the New Vision? New Vision Mount Vernon. New Vision Mount New Vision, uh, I'm sorry? New Vision Mount Vernon. New Vision Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon. Folks, if there's anything that you missed or that you feel that you want to take a look at with the New Vision, uh, please go to their website, take a look at it, and of course, always join us on Facebook where we can do a little Q&A and uh, our viewers are going to go ahead and ask you some questions at some point. You're going to want to respond to that. Um, we also have a Facebook page as well. Okay, what's your Facebook page? New Vision. New Vision. New Vision. New Vision. New Vision. So what you have to do is put a New Vision, that's, we pop up. New Vision Mount Vernon. Okay. New Vision Mount Vernon. Comptroller, very big deal in the city of Mount Vernon as of late. A lot of news coming out about, you know, not so recent past on the current, uh, who is the current controller? What, what's going to make you different? I, I see that you have a background as a CPA. Absolutely, yes. And I, I think that that's an important role 
uh, for anybody to play when you're going into this seat. But what else qualifies you to be the comptroller, and uh, what are your plans for the city? Well, thank you. I am, um, like you said, I am a CPA, and although the city charter doesn't require the controller to be a CPA, I do think it's important to have that professional credential because in order to become a CPA, you know, there's a 16-hour exam, there's lots of CPE requirements, so you have to stay abreast of current um, changes to law and, and, and accounting methods and, and that sort of thing. Um, other than that, I have over 17 years of experience accounting, finance, investment, law, and you know, it's really important to have a professional in this office. I think we have to elevate our standards. In order to bring our city forward, uh, we need someone who understands not only these uh, financial and accounting methods, but also how other branches of government affect our finances. You know, someone who can reach across the aisle and understand that, you know, how code enforcement and how our quality of life changes affect our financial bottom line. And I think that's something that we don't focus on. So as controller, you know, there are a lot of things that I want to bring to the table. Most importantly, we need to upgrade our systems. We need to bring it to, you know, 2018. We need more transparency. We need to communicate with our constituents, let people understand what's going on with our financial, uh, with the financial picture and what's going on with our bottom line. We need to be, you know, simple things like pay our taxes online. That's something that you can't do in Mount Vernon. It's a good idea. <laughs> it's something, you know, it's one of the main things, something very simple, yeah. but it's one of the main things that I hear all the time when I'm out with people. They just want to be able to pay their taxes online. So new vision. <laughs> That's a new you know, sure. I think it's interesting how you guys came up, you know, came about this. You, you know, you're working together uh, kind of in unison. However, you're individual thinkers, not quite the traditional way of coming out and introducing yourself into the political game. Would that, would that be a fair oh, yeah. assessment? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Right now, council, I mean, it's been, you know, the current uh, mayor, Richie Thomas, has had to go into federal courts. He's had to sue the council. What makes you different? Are you willing or more flexible to help Richie and his, and his visions for Mount Vernon? And are you guys in line, would you say? Or? Absolutely. You know, the, the most important thing uh, in any government is to uh, follow the city charter. I mean, that's the regulating body of, you know, that makes the law, that's the laws of the city. And I think if you start with that and everybody adheres to that, uh, you can definitely have a smooth, you know, follow through with everybody else. You know, when, you know, when city council, you know, goes one way and the mayor goes another way and, you know, that just doesn't, it just doesn't know. It just seems it just like doesn't, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work, you know. Robin, what's your answer? <laughs> so many thoughts about that. But not it was the mayor. It, we certainly want to do our job for the citizens. Um, yeah. You know, it's our role to be responsible and we take that seriously. Um, we don't want to obstruct just for the sake of obstructing, um, but we certainly want to make sure that, that we are the checks and balances. We don't want to be a rubber stamp. I don't think that's what uh, that arm of government is designed for. I think our system is designed for checks and balances. And I think if we just focus on the fundamentals, just do our job, work with all leadership that we have to contend uh, to work with, and be partners, be willing partners, I think we'll have a, a successful city, and that's what our citizens expect from us. They expect us to, to do our jobs. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're not, we're not for or against Mayor Thomas. And, um, you know, in truth, let's give credit to the city council in that perhaps maybe they weren't all obstructionists. Maybe he was doing things not correctly, not following the charter. So let's, you know, I'll be fair in that aspect. However... Well, he did so in federal court. And he yes, win. right. So, but over the period of the last couple of years, you know, the way the interaction has been has been very negative. So we bring to the table the fact that we are not for or against the mayor. We are for the city of Mount Vernon. Right. So if we need to push an agenda of his that's going to work for the city, we will. If we need to pull it back, we will. But in the event of any disagreement or not seeing eye to eye, we pledge to the citizens of Mount Vernon that we will be civil. I don't think the city council and the leadership understand so far 
how the dysfunction is affecting the city. It's negative, it's demoralizing, it, it is breaking the spirit of the citizens, so much so that many of them don't want to participate in give the political process. Yeah, give me a, a good example, or give, give the audience a good example of it to support that <laughs> statement. Well, look at, uh, for example, the press conference a couple of days ago. Um, the mayor stopped in, there was a shouting match between the public and, you know, the, the point is, is that the city council was having their their press conference and the mayor basically crashed it. Other times I've been in the city council chambers during meetings and when they are referring to the mayor, he is referred to as a liar and you know, the name calling is, is just very demeaning. As an elected official, you have to have a tough skin. If you responded to everything you know, when you that was he, said about you in public, you, you would spend your whole day, you know, talking about those things. When it comes things. to the city council, that you know, the council that's supposed to have the ability to reach across the table. Yes. And it just seems to be a lot of localized infighting, political hay being thrown mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. How does it change the new vision? Let's say the new vision is elected. What is the new vision? What's the first thing you do? Let's say you're elected. What's the first thing we tackle? The first thing I would do is, under the leadership of the mayor, is I would call for our interagency meeting for us all to get together mm -hmm. and get to know each other. introduce ourselves. Let them know what our plans are. We're not against you. We're not going to fight you. But we would like to establish a clear vision for Mount Vernon. Yeah, I think as controller, I know a lot of people are concerned about who the controller is because a lot of times the control ends up being a swing between uh, city council and the mayor. Well, so, the mayor said some real horrific, you know, some things <laughs> that were, you know, that they were still using handwritten checks. We had, you know, uh, employees getting bounced checks, and that's a very important role as a comptroller. I think everybody would agree. Here. Abs absolutely. In any audience. But my first order of business, you know, like Angela said, is just to let the mayor know and let whoever the city council people know that as controller, I am a neutral party. I am voting with the people. And that sometimes that's going to be in line with what the mayor's vision is, and sometimes that's going to be in line with the city council's vision is. So I hope that most of the time all three bodies of government have the same vision. And I think if we want the same things, we should be able to find some kind of compromise. But I think that's the first thing. On that note, let me, let me ask you guys, you create, who created the new vision? How did four people come together? It was, okay. it was organic. Well, it, was, it was lined together here. <coughs> Develop some of the language that you guys have on your website that I pulled. Uh, people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan, right? It, so you guys have it, a, lot of, a lot of good things laid out on your website. Um, sorry. How did four individuals like yourselves come together? Community I mean, desire. Seems it, to have some synergy here. Yeah, right? community exactly. desire. It's very organic. Uh, we are a group of citizens and, and other citizens uh, that said, you know, who's going who's gonna to get in there and try to make a difference? Because we seem to have had the same cycle of, of people running and they just, you know, go to different offices. And we wanted to impress that. So as, as citizens and as leaders and as business owners, um, professionals that live in Mount Vernon, we decided, okay, who's going to go in there and try to make a difference? We need to, we need a new vision. Steve, we don't want to do that. I'm so sorry. You okay? Well, we don't want to. Uh, is there, is there, if this is a anybody, we're not superheroes, you know. So you mm -hmm. know, we you know, there's a lot of challenges ahead, you know, to come together, uh, to to work as one, and we 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 do all have the same vision, you know. We we our main goal is to uh, put Matt, uh, Mount Vernon back on on track, you know, is to give a lot of civility, a lot of you know, respect and, and to see that a government can actually uh, be worked out, you know, can work as one, you know, as, sure. as a team. And the New Vision Party is not just the four people that you see here. We're a collective of our neighbors, yes. our concerned citizens. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when you see people out wearing our t-shirts, these are just, it's a grassroots organization. We, we've been uh, working on missions for a couple of years. Of course, and, uh, and let's be clear, we're, we're independent Democrats, but this crosses yeah, party yeah. lines. We went to the last city council meeting. Yeah. Real yeah. <laughs> Folks, if you'll notice down here at the bottom, uh, a picture of the, of the actual row, and it says here, New Vision. 
I think that's pretty pretty cool that you guys are able to get on the same ballot. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I almost made your own party line. <laughs> we we, 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 we uh, have our own vote. Our new vision. And uh, it sounds to me like you guys can work in unison. Some of the issues that we're having, I mean, we just have heard an announcement about the, uh, the council not coming together with the mayor, mm -hmm. which is blocking the ability to hire a new commissioner. You know, where does this end? How does it change? Well, you know, I feel that the charter is here not to hold us in bondage, but in some issues, if there's a variance that may be needed, then it may be possible, if it is in the interest of the city, to bring in the best person. Um, I do believe that Mount Vernon should be looked at first. However, you could also, you know, you could also put it in terms of, for example, if you needed heart surgery, do you want the best surgeon in Mount Vernon or do you want the best surgeon? So, you know, it is possible that we could create a variance to give the mayor what he needs to see his vision through. The people voted for him and right now we're being held back, we're at a stalemate. So, you know, what do we need here? Robin? Repeat your question again, I wanna make sure. Well, what, what we're trying, what I was asking is, is that right now, we need to, the Mount Vernon needs a new commissioner. City Council <coughs> isn't coming together. It's preventing for a commissioner. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Spazio in as the, as the, um, Spazio. Spazio, pardon me. And as deputy. a, uh, you know, honorary deputy. commissioner, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, the, set, the council, I would say, has to work with the, with the mayor at this point. I mean, yes. You know, come together we, and have a commissioner. Wouldn't you agree? And I, I think it, it, it goes both ways. The mayor has to work with the city council. If the city council says, you know, here are some issues and here are con some concerns, and then the city council has to work with the mayor yes. uh, and say, we understand your issues and concerns. This is what we expect as citizens. We expect to see a coming together in leadership working out the differences and coming to an agreement so that we're not without a police commissioner for any length of time. We expect that from our leaders and, and we know that people are voting for us because they expect that of us. They expect us to engender that. Well, Lita, tell us a little bit about some of the visions that you want to bring to the city of Mount Vernon as comptroller. Well, okay. You know, tell me what you'd like to see. I mean, I, I've, I've read a lot. I see that we've touched base on tax breaks for you know, new construction companies coming in. Uh, you're laying out alternative plans not to give such tax incentives, uh, for lack of better words. What is it that you guys are really trying to drive at when it comes to rebuilding zombie houses or coming in and, and bring, bringing the neighborhoods up to a, to a standard? Well, so one of the things that I looked at when I, when I decided to run, I started to analyze like our budgets and our um, financial statements. And one of the things that I noticed is that um, most, of our, you know, most of our revenue, obviously, and in most municipalities comes from property taxes. 42% of our revenue comes from other sources, you know, parking fines and slip tax and, and that, you know, sales tax, that sort of thing. So we need to grow that number. That number has been slightly declining. That, need, that number needs to go up. We need economic development. We need to bring in new businesses. And when you talk about tax pilots, um, we need to do a cost-benefit analysis whenever we're considering any kind of development, any kind of plan. If it costs us more than it's benefiting our bottom line, then that's not something good for the city. Because what's happening is with these tax pilots, you bring in new people, that's draining our resources in terms of the school budget, in terms of fire, police, sewers, and that burden is going to be shared by the current taxpayers. That means property taxes are going to go up, mm -hmm. and they're going to continue to go up, and that's not a sustainable model. We have to figure out ways to bring in revenue from other sources. Okay. Sounds like a, you know, sounds pretty good. You know? <laughs> but the reality is, is that you, what, how do you incent, how do you bring a builder into the city of Mount Vernon? Uh, similar to the way we've seen in, in, in Yonkers where we have new building, new development mm -hmm. going on without certain tax incentives. No, I'm not so well, I'm not against plan. Well, I'm not against tax incentives. I'm just against tax incentives that do not benefit us. It's a what, we're, what we're bringing in currently is not beneficial to us. We're bringing in a, a development for development stakes, slapping up a building, bringing in 300 new people, and that's draining our resources, is not economic development. I, I, I want to read one thing, okay. and, and I got this. The current city council and comptroller continues to approve residential development with 30 to 40 year tax breaks. They have passed new laws that circumvent the land use boards with their 
form-based zone. What does that mean? Do you want to form, yeah, form-based zoning uh, was a process proposed uh, to the city as a way to, from my understanding, as it was uh, explained to me, to kind of circumvent the rigmarole process of it having to go through all of these different uh, land use agencies to streamline development to, to make it so that uh, we could, you know, grow our city uh, economically through development. And that's where the, the form-based development came from. It went through a plethora of processes uh, in order for it to be adopted. Um, and that, that process was all about uh, kind of checking all the boxes that uh, they thought that they, that should be checked to make sure that everything is covered and anything within this particular zone uh, will already be up to par. It's almost like a, a comprehensive plan or a plan within uh, the, 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 the city itself. Um, but to answer your question, I feel like we need a comprehensive plan in order for developers to come in here and, and say, you know, I have something in alignment with uh, with, with the vision of the city. And I think that's what citizens, and certainly uh, where we have uh, kind of been very concerned, we haven't seen a comprehensive plan really kind of push this. It's been a can that's kind of kicked from administration to administration. Um, um, have, a, have a streamlined process because when businesses want to come in, they need to know a set timeline that their, their business will be up and running. And when the process is not so streamlined, if they get their financial information from the bank today, they can't be thinking about three or four years. It, they have to have a set time limit by which they know their business will be up and running. So we have to streamline our process. We have to have our comprehensive and area plans. And we have to clean up the city. We have mm -hmm. to beautify. Mm -hmm. I can't Absolutely. bring business. That's right. Mount Vernon has to clean up, mm -hmm. um, have cameras at entryways, have outstanding highway entrances and signs so mm -hmm. that when people come in, they're like, they're blown away. Wow, this is Mount Vernon. Yes. We have a great diverse population. We have a great labor force. We need career training. So, you know, there are a lot of low hanging fruit that can be uh, worked on. It's not rocket science. We have some great examples in our neighboring municipalities. And then, in, in uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, this is probably one of the best interviews I've had. Yeah, cool. uh, it's been very interesting. Uh, but again, we all everything so in Auburn is interesting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, with that said, what I'd like to do is just go around the table, give yourselves, uh, you know, one minute to talk to your audience, to talk to the people of Mount Vernon, you know. And tell them what you hope for. <laughs> Great. Should I start? Oh, please do. Walida. <laughs> Mount Vernon. Um, Walida Aime. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Walida Aime, and I <laughs> want to be your new comptroller come November 7th. Um, please vote for us in row I. I, um, like I said, I'm a 10 year resident of Mount Vernon. I, I'm a wife and a mother. This is the only home that my children know and I want to move this forward. I, I bring professionalism. I want to bring transparency. I want to bring efficiency to the controller's office. I want to work with the mayor and the city council and really move the vision for Mount Vernon forward. Steve? And again, I'm Stephen Facendo. So, uh, my, the just, uh, just for the fact of uh, that we all live in this town, um, we we just want to we just want to make it beautiful. You know, we want to uh, want it to be normal. Mm -hmm. Really, just bottom line, plain and simple. We want forget the chaos. You know, we want normal government. We want interaction between government and residents. We want to know what the residents want is most important. Uh, we we just uh, want to be normal. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to have a Good old town again. Robin. <laughs> Hi, once again. Robin Harmon Myers, wanting to be your next city council person. I want to work for the people. I want to do the work of the people. I want you to have the people, a city government that you are proud of. And I want to be able to demonstrate to you that it is possible to work with your, your mayors and, and any, and any uh, folks in leadership that uh, you may need to, even if you disagree. Um, I want to see our city blossom. We have everything we need. We just need to nurture it. We need to take care of each other. And I will be engendering that. Andrew. Please vote Roi. Roi, that's right. 
<laughs> Hi, Mount Vernon. My name is Angela Neal, again to finish. Um, I love this city. We've been living here for about 12 years. I moved here with my husband and my two little girls. And we've been in the background supporting, supporting other issues, supporting you know, our, our community with the Wilson Woods and going out to city council and school board meetings and speaking out against nepotism and, and asking the city council to listen to us and, and not pass you know, the Mount Vernon West and various other projects. And um, we've been mostly in the supporting role because we have one family member that's been out there. So um, I have the support of my girls. They said, mommy, you should go for it. And um, you know, it, it's a family and community movement, the fact that I'm running. Um, I didn't decide to run on my own. We all agreed that you know, I would represent this community and also um, other members of the community that may not know that I'm thinking about them. Um, as I, I see what happens when variances are granted that affect homeowners, um, multifamily variances granted in single family lots and commercial variances that are, you know, very close to the homeowner, you know, school children that need to be looked after and their facilities that need to be managed. So, you know, sometimes you don't realize that, um, you know, various issues are affecting homeowners, but, you know, we all have to look out for each other and we all have to look out for people who, who aren't at the table. And that's why I'm here, Mount Vernon. Um, it's a, it's a community, community effort, my yep. being here. And with that, folks, again, if you have any questions, or you want to learn a little bit more about New Vision, I would encourage you to go to the newvisionmv.org. That's www.newvisionmv.org. Any questions, do your homework. <laughs> uh, that's what I read you. Do your homework. Won't be a robot Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Take a look at their website, and I got to tell you again, I want to thank you guys for joining us here on the office. Thank you, thank you for having so much for having and, uh, thank This you. is real, very exciting for us. Real eye. Uh, thank so. you. We're we're everybody, history, we're guys. everybody feels the same way. <laughs> we're creating history here, guys. Yes. We need yeah. support. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.